Good evening. We'd like to call the Thursday, June 22nd, 2023 receivers meeting to order. Would we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, again, good evening and welcome to the June 2023 receivers meeting. Uh, before I get started, I would like to, again, publicly congratulate all of our graduates, the graduates of the class of 2023. Again, we're very, very proud of each and every one of you and are here to support you along the way as you matriculate and transition successfully into adulthood. So let's give our graduates a round of applause, please. We will move right along and go into our superintendent's report, Dr. Parkinson. All right, good evening, Receiver Nichols, and um, good evening, school board members, community members, thank you. Um, I want to give a quick update on the superintendent's report. First, uh, starting with uh, last night, we had the state of the district. Um, I want to thank all of those who came out and participated. Um, the, a lot of information shared. I have received a few um, emails regarding some of the information that was covered. Some meetings have been scheduled to discuss that, um, discuss the, the state of the district. So again, if there are any questions, you know, please feel free to email me directly. Um, ask the superintendent or those who have my direct email. You can use that as well. Um, there was a technical um, glitch up from my understanding last night, but this is up online on the website site right now for anyone who wishes to view the uh, state of the district again, uh, an, an extremely great deal of information, and I'm looking forward to further conversations about the state of the district. Any questions? I see update there. Um, last night, I provided um, a, a very quick overview of the Mass Inside update. The report was just received by um, the school district. The plan is to hold a town hall to allow any additional questions regarding the Mass Insight report, to have some conversations about it, just a, some small meetings. Um, the final report is on the website for those to, to view that, to view the report. Um, if you all recall, the Mass Insight organization came into the district in October, in mid-October, where they conducted several surveys to all of our stakeholders, community members, students, teachers, administrators, and based upon all of the feedback that was provided, was um, yielded the report that is on the district website. So please feel free to go to that website, review it. Um, if there are any questions, you know, we will obviously provide you with the updates. And the report is basically the information that was generated from all of you, from all of the stakeholders. So that's what they provided us. And from this report, um, our goal is to develop our, um, our amended recovery plan and our strategic plan. So more to come on that. Um, family, parent, community engagement. Just want to congratulate uh, some of our community members who participated in the I Lead Leadership Institute. Um, from my understanding, it was a great, great opportunity, some great growth from some of the individuals who participated in this. And again, this was sponsored by our parent university, free to the community. And again, we just want to continue to encourage you to participate in these events um, as they do come up, and we'll have many more of these next school year. All right, so the fun stuff, some of the highlights, awards, and assemblies. We just had um, many of our students just completed. Um, we had our eighth grade move up ceremony at uh, Edgemont and their formal dance and some nice pictures from that. All the formals from all the schools, and I had the opportunity to share some of those during the last superintendent's meeting. The students were just, you know, dressed to, dress to the nine, looked really, really good. Um, we also had our pre K and kindergarten promotion ceremonies, move up ceremonies district wide. Um, through all the buildings, Toby Farm, K Center, our kindergarten center. So again, the month of moon was month of June was extremely busy with all these promotion ceremonies and move up. And um, next we had our baccalaureate for the senior class of 2023. Um, very well done, beautiful occasion, and it was just really nice to see many of the students who came out. They were pinned. They received their alumni pin that evening. All the students who participated, which was a big deal. Um, they're officially members of the uh, Chester Open School District Alumni Association. Class of 2023 graduation took place at Newman University, a beautiful event, wonderful occasion again. Um, I wanted to report that last year, if you recall, we started reporting the amount of scholarship dollars our students received. Last year, we were at $1.3 million in scholarship. This past year, it was 3.968, so you want to say roughly $400 million in scholarship um, for our students that was reported to the school counselors. 400 million? 
excuse me, four million. Did I say 400 million? I wish it was 400 million. It was four million dollars. We didn't get to 400 million now. <laughs> so, four million dollars, and, and, and that is the trend that we want to see that um, our, our goal is to make sure that this number grows year after year. Um, so congratulations as receiver, receiver Nichols started the meeting off. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Job well done and um, good luck uh, in, for, in future endeavors. So we had some um, awards of excellence, our ceremony to, for our staff and community members that was held at the STEM Academy. I believe that was last week. It was a, another joyous occasion for everyone who needed to be recognized, really well-deserved recognition of the staff who has done a great deal of work for our students, for this community. Again, many of the parents were recognized that evening, community organizations, um, and we actually were able to say goodbye that evening to Dr. Wright, who retired, not goodbye, she'll be back around. We did try to convince her to stick around for another year for us, but um, Dr. Wright, after 40 years, and I believe three months of service to the Chester Upland School District, um, has left and retired, and we actually were able to recognize her that evening as well. So again, a joyous occasion, um, well-deserved night for many people who have worked hard to move this district forward and, and, and have the opportunity to say thank you once again to all those who, who were involved. All right, um, spoke about this briefly last night in um, the state of the district, but our students at Toby Farms participated in a boat building experience, which was amazing. Um, as, as I stated, you know, at the beginning of the year when this project started, you walked into a room where there was plywood, um, you know, two by fours leaning against the wall, and you walk in and you see the students, the slopes on the students' faces, like how are we going to take these materials and turn it into something that's actually going to float on, on the river? Um, and as you can see, the pictures before you, these are the final product. This is the final product of the boats that the students built. Um, again, um, just a great opportunity for our students, and, and they learned a great deal from this experience, but also had fun in doing it. So school can also be fun you know, when we're learning. So our students were able to learn that all the mathematics, geometry that goes into measuring and and, and building the boat was a fantastic experience for students. So again, kudos to those. Um, right here, this is again a, some, something I shared last night. This is a part of our enrollment um, enrollment opportunities for our students. We actually are out campaigning to increase our enrollment in the district, um, but we want everyone to know that enrollment for the 23-24 uh, school year is open. Um, it's been open for some time, but please, parents, if, if you're listening, please make sure that you um, visit the school that your child will be attending or come to the district office and we can help you enroll your child for the upcoming 23-24 school year. And that concludes my superintendent report, Susan Nichols. Thank you, Dr. Parkinson. Just two quick things on the Mass Insight report. I, I think we need to really schedule those community town hall meetings as soon as possible. And, and for the community, for you all to know that, again, it does start the process for an amended recovery plan, which we're going to do. So there will be another opportunity as the recovery plan on a not just the academic side, but the financial side, there will be also opportunities for community members to have input and some uh, some interviews and surveys will be conducted as well. Uh, the goal is for us to have this, this amended recovery plan by the end of this calendar year, and that's like start to finish, meaning the processes we have to go through the Mass Insight Diagnostics, we have to go through the PFM portion with the finances, we have to then submit to the Secretary of Education, for PDE to give feedback. We then have to, once we have that feedback, have an opportunity for the public to have some feedback, and then it's submitted to the judge for court approval. So that's why I'm saying by the end of the calendar year, but let's be mindful of that. And uh, we can get those scheduled as soon as possible. That would be greatly appreciated. And I want to just say something, that I guess, I don't want to be the dry eye tonight, but Ms. Arnold would appreciate this one. We were up with, with the students from Toby with the boats. The students actually said, now we understand why we, we have to learn about fractions, because they were able to use fractions and everything for measurements with making bolts. So that was, we were happy about that. <laughs> All right. Our student rep is on summer break. Let's give them a hand. Enjoy your summer break. <laughs> we will now have our presentations, I believe, is up first, uh, Coach Bell, our athletic director. We were getting uh, getting situated. Good evening to all. We want to pass out to the board. I'll chat with you. Pass out to you, brochures, if you will. If you can pass it down, thank you so much. All right.
So good evening to all, LaDante Bell, Athletic Director. Um, I want to share with you, what I wanted to give you was something to take with you, any event that I'm moving to quickly, I do have limited time. So I want to make sure that I give you my undivided attention here, as well as when you go home, you have some things you can read over, okay? So I have some students here who I will ask to, um, to present just about their experience as a clip, all right? So let's get into the, into the presentation. So my table of contents, what, what, what will I speak about tonight? The why, why age, compliant, pre-COVID, uh, mid-COVID, post-COVID, and a new vision. Um, I believe that, you know, me stepping away from being the head coach of football uh, and to take on a role as the athletic director, it came with a great sacrifice. I love coaching. However, the greater good is to make sure that all programs are thriving. So that was one of the reasons that I stepped away from being the head coach. So my, my first bullet, the why, um, the heartbeat of every decision. I need for everyone in this room to know, I speak humbly with this, but the heartbeat of my, my decision on what I do as an AD is all about our students, all about our student athletes. And being tasked to be also not only the athletic director, but also to be the um, director of activities, it comes with a great task. And so I wanna make sure that everyone in the room understands that my heartbeat it's, 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 uh, my heartbeat of every decision is about our student athletes. Okay, so as you see a, a great picture there, um, those pictures were taken by some uh, photographers, also myself. Um, every student proud to have a relationship with. I believe that in the uh, AD role um, is not just a title; it's really about building relationships. And I can say humbly that every student in those pictures, I have a great relationship with. And I think that building the relationships will bring our students back to the district. We do have issues where we are char we have charter schools surrounding us. So with that being said, it's so important, it's vital, it's imperative that we build relationships. And I know for myself as a student, uh, as an athletic director, my charge to every coach is to make sure that we have relationships, great relationships. Quad A's, academics, athletics, arts, activities. Um, you know, looking at our agenda, looking at our minutes, excuse me, able to pull some things from that. Um, not to, you know, um, make up or reinvent will. This is what we already do in the district. So game activities and practices set for practice sessions provide opportunities, highlighted to teach the values of competition, sportsmanship, and teamwork. Um, compliance, the school district state and PIAA requirements, it is a mandate. It is by law. We are. Uh, we must be compliant, and I can't spell all that out in the limited time. However, I did give a brochure. You have my email, and we can discuss. But some of the things that I highlighted include all activities related to competitive or exhibition sport contests, games, or events. Offer that highlighted word opportunity for participation in interscholastic athletic programs for male and female students. Um, so we won't have an issue with Title IX. Uh, so that being that being said, to male and female students, or on as an equal basis as um, without discrimination, undergo a physical examination by a licensed physician. We've already started um, our students in having their their physicals. In fact, fall physicals already concluded, and then we'll get into winter physicals uh, as we get closer to those that season. Students are required to maintain passing grades and four. And four, there is, you know, this ruler and so on is saying they're not passing classes. If we really look at the verbiage of things, <laughs> students are required to maintain passing grades in four full credit subjects and, and progress monitoring must be reported on a weekly basis. Some things that we struggled with because we were trying to move to an automated system. However, things have to be in physical, meaning that we have to speak to teachers. Myself, coaches, we speak to teachers. Uh, students are to report back to their coaches, their progress reports. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm very transparent tonight. There were some issues when we tried to get the automatic system where we'll come back to um, the principal or to whomever would listen or read um, what the grades would look like for our student athletes. However, moving forward, we have a physical form that is due every Friday. Pre-COVID, the reason why I'm sharing this information because there is a big picture. And if we look at little pixels, we really don't get the full picture. So I want to give us the full picture. Pre-COVID, as you can see in this data, 
PIAA sanctioned sports pre COVID 2019 2020. I came on the scene as the interim AD, uh, still coaching, still in the classroom, and thankfully uh, to become the full time AD. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks to, to Dr. Parker. And let me, I, I went too far. I do apologize. Thank you to the board. Thank you to uh, Dr. Parkinson and Receiver Nichols for allowing me to share tonight. Um, but if we look at the, the, the data tonight, fall sports, winter sports, spring sports, what you will see, and I made sure I was very detailed tonight, in green are the sports that are offered. In yellow, sports that were on the way. Okay, so 2019, 2020, prior to me becoming AD, cross country, in play, field hockey, not in play, football, in play, golf club, not in play, soccer was on the way. There were conversa uh, conversations regarding soccer in 2019 and 2020. Um, tennis for girls, we, we didn't have tennis for girls in 2019, 2020. Volleyball for girls, in play. Water polo, not in play. Looking at the percentages, 37% to 50%. That 37% are the green, but if you include the yellow, we're at 50% sports offer. You follow me? Yes? Thank you so much. Winter sports, basketball, in competition, bowling, competitive spirit, gymnastics, not in competition, indoor track and field, uh, rifle, not in competition, swimming and diving intro, not in section, wrestling, not in section. In winter sports 2019 2020, we were at 25% offered by the, by the district. Spring sports, baseball, lacrosse, softball, tennis, boys, track and field, and volleyball. If you look at the data, in 2019, 2020, 50% offer. Now, there is a trend. we got to pay attention to it. Here we go. Amid COVID. Amid COVID 2020, 2021. So we go from 37% to 50% in fall sports. During COVID, 12.5%. That's the issue. And what it was, of course, it was COVID. People didn't trust anything that was going on. Sports were not offered by PIAA. Football during the spring was the only sport offered, 12.5%. Winter sports, basketball, indoor track, 25%. You will see in winter sports that that number really didn't move. Okay, spring sports, baseball, track and field, 33% in 2021, 22, I'm sorry, 20 and 21. Post-COVID, 50%. Now fall sports is moving back up, cross country, football, soccer, volleyball, girls, 50%. Winter sports, basketball, indoor track, still at 25%. Spring sports, baseball, track and field, 33%. That's post-COVID. What we've learned, I know what I've learned as the AD and as the coach, is that during COVID, we had issues. Uh, parents would not allow their students to come out, and so that's why we had low numbers. But now that things are starting to, to come to somewhat of a normalcy, we're starting to see some trending numbers that, that are uh, that are helping us, you know, to, to bring some programs back. Okay, past year, 2022-23. If we look at fall sports, we're at 62.5% up to 75%. Okay, so we're looking at cross country, field hockey, football, golf club, soccer, tennis girls in the yellow to bring back. Volleyball girls, water polo, we are not competing in water polo at this time or at that time. Winter sports, basketball, bowling. Competitive spirit, gymnastics are not, we did not offer those sports, but indoor track and field still at 25% in the winter. Spring sports, baseball, tennis boys, uh, bringing it back as an introduction, track and field 33% to 50%. Okay, so that's past year, up to present, to present 62.5%, up to 75%. The encouragement is to have golf offered to our students. Um, that would be a club, winter sports, basketball, indoor track, 25% to 50%. Now you see highlighted swimming and diving intro, wrestling intro. In my conversation with the YMCA, um, right now I have a, a baseline of what it would look like if we were to get our kids to be introduced to swimming. When I went to Wyatt University for a conference with their director, he informed me that it was a liability to have our students come over to swim. So therefore, my duty is to make sure that we can get uh, some type of contractual information from the Y to have our students from elementary to middle to high school to be introduced to aquatics. Once introduced, that's why it's in yellow, 
So that's 25% to 50%. Same with wrestling. We do have uh, an opportunity with um, the Chester Panthers uh, wrestling program. That program is up. Um, we're getting it off the ground. We did have our conversations with a league in order for us to enter into the league. Once we enter into the league, we then will start um, to introduce wrestling back to the district. Any questions so far? Okay, 25% to 50% in where sports, spring sports, baseball, softball have been talked about is the interest from our young lady um, to bring softball back so we have to make it a club. Tennis, uh, bless you. Tennis, same for tennis, to make it a club to really get the, um, the interest back, track and field. Right now we're at 33%. To 66% in our spring sports. Um, and we look at our total participation from the past year. Fall sports, we had a, a 117 participants. Winter sports, 45. Middle school sports, 64. Spring sports, 37. What I did was I broke down every group. So you see, all football was 56 players. Cheer, 17. Non varsity, AJV. Coach, am I correct? Okay. All right. Cross country, nine girls, eight boys. Um, I'm sorry, nine girls, eight boys. Volleyball, 15. Soccer, 12. And as you can see, it goes on and on from winter to spring. <clears throat> New vision. New vision. So I did have a coaches conference, um, and I was unable to put this on my slide, but I had a coaches conference not long ago where uh, we went to a, a, a location where it was just myself and the coaches. Some things to implement. The one thing that I did speak about was no one is bigger than the brand, not even myself. That being said, it's that the foundation, all coaches were given a task, a charge. Put everything that we do behind a lens. The reason why, because we're losing kids to charter schools. And the reason being is that it's being exposed. So everything that you'll see from this slide forward, it's some of the pictures that I've taken, some of the flyers that I've taken to make sure that we keep our student athletes at the forefront. Because if not, we will lose them to other schools. So kids feel great about being in front of a lens. Right? The so Delva Champions 2022, we just won a Delva Championship. Kids were very excited about that. Been a long road, but we made it. We did it. Coach Keith got his uh, 100th win. Um, captured. Um, forget where we were. When I took that picture, but that was a great image of him. Sad versus students games. Um, we want to make sure there's an inclusion of our students who are special needs. So myself and others, some of uh, the, the class advisors, we came up with this to make sure that we include our student athletes, also include those include those students who are special needs. A very very nice uh, game. This is our second year. Staff always seems to win the game. <laughs> Okay, and not only that, capture the moments. Um, it's, some, it's some people that uh, I really speak to in regards to tradition. Chester has a rich tradition in basketball, and there's some people to be highlighted. This past year, Zane Shaw was highlighted. Um, and that was a beautiful occasion. Beautiful occasion. As you can see, his family is surrounding him, but that was a wonderful, wonderful time. We also had um, our signing days for our student athletes. Myself and uh, Mr. Franklin, who I've seen his, his, uh, his presentation, he and I linked up this year to, to really merge the, the, the vision. So it was a decision day as opposed to a signing day. So this was prior to this year. So this was last year's signing day. Um, and this is Coach uh, Taylor with his uh, 2000 win with the program. Coach Shake um, at the Pim Relays. Our middle school cheerleaders, you can see there's a lot of them. We have a lot of interest in middle school. Prior to COVID or mid-COVID, parents, uh, well, we, we didn't offer middle school uh, sports, but we're bringing it back step by step. Parents are starting to become, um, they're starting to trust. Okay, so we're bringing our middle school programs back. Here are our young ladies at Delco's. Um, we had some young ladies who won medals, but that's the... Um, they won second place at Delco's. Autism, I make it a big deal during Autism Month to really keep that going. And I did offer you guys those, those uh, brochures. Um, I want to let you know that we do have a um, 
C, uh, uh, C Prize Sports Buzz. It's a newsletter that I send out every Monday for, for everyone to read. Um, I would love to get everyone's email and send it directly to you, okay? And this, uh, this is really dear to me. So we have some student athletes who's, who's experienced trauma. And so one of my dear friends, um, he's coming, he's partnering with uh, Carmelo Anthony, who's now retired, a retired NBA player, but this is his book that we're reading. And in this book is talking about trauma. It's talking about what happens when you're not talking about it. Uh, we have some students in here who have attended some of these programs, but it was about four to five sessions. And the young ladies and young men were able to open up and speak about the trauma that they're experiencing. Last thing for you today. So our Clipper ship or our Clipper store online store is open again. Um, I know that there's been a lot of conversation about, hey, I can't find gear. It's available. You know, all you got to do is just you know, put your phone up to the, the QR code. It'll take you directly to the store. You can purchase that with any questions, comments, none at all. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I will, I, I did, I, I'm sorry, I did invite about three students out to really speak about their experience if I have time. Um, just wanted to, you know, ask them if they would speak about their, their clippership experience. You said children, so I can't say no. But I'm in charge of presentations moving forward. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> I'd like to offer a comment and really say thank you for the extensive uh, number and variety of the sports activities that you are now considering for our children. And also to say that some years ago, uh, I worked with students who were tennis players, girls, and they wrote about their tennis experience. And if any of us have played tennis, we can remember the time when we thought our record had a hole in it. And the ball just seemingly went through it. Mr. Pondexter was the tennis coach at that time, and because they wrote so brilliantly, I think that contributed to them talking about situations that they overcame, and they are great scholars today. So uh, I want to thank you for what you're doing for our school district, and please know that on the tennis court, on the fields, in the pool, wherever they are, and as you very well know, that trans into other areas of our lives to make a whole people. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Emma, just one. Just one. Just one. Which one of you? <laughs> thank you. Hi. Good evening. So as you know, he brought me up here to talk about my experience as a Chester High student athlete. And I can say this is my third year going to basketball. Last senior year, so excited. <laughs> um, and I can say it's been phenomenal. Love, hate, relationship, the practice is long, but it's okay. We got through it. And I can say with all sports, though, it comes with like building character. It helps on the outside world because it's not just a sport. It's a support system and it's a family that's built into our orange and black. And see pride and that orange and black means a lot, especially when you get to put it on. So it was really special for me just for somebody to believe me to put it on because I heard it took a lot of skill to actually put it on some years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's nice. Oh, Coach Karen, I'll be joining y'all for pom poms this season too. But um, <laughs> I can say it's awesome. And I need y'all to continue to support our student athletes, keep feeding these needs that way it keeps our kids off the streets that's the door that it opened especially for our community with a lot of violence that we have in our city so that it really brings it together and it's awesome so i want these numbers to continue to grow and i want our numbers and support to continue to grow so thank you, thank you. thank you z so much and coach bell thank you for the great presentation Dr. Sutton, any more presentations? No, sir. Okay, uh, well, I, I would like to take this opportunity to do a presentation of sorts. Uh, it, it is, it's, a, it's tough for me to say this, but I'm over it, I guess. <laughs> Our business manager, Mr. Wanda Mosley, 
is going to be leaving us at the end of this fiscal year, June 30. Well, she's going to go on a journey. We're, we're going to loan her out for just a little bit to another uh, school district because we all know her skill set is next to none. She's done some great things here in the Chester Upland mm -hmm. School District. And I, I just want to wholeheartedly and publicly thank Ms. Mosley for all of her hard work, dedication, firmness, uh, integrity, her just bringing compliance back to Chester Upland, yes. the long hours, the puzzle putting back together, taking apart, brain surgery, whatever you want to call it. Ms. Mosley has done a magnificent job here in Chester Upland School District. It has not gone unnoticed. I got beat up before I came out by the school board because they said you did nothing to try to get her to stay. And I told them that I understood the assign her assignment and I understand what she has to do. And with that, I'm at peace because I know that she's left this place much better than she mm. found it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've come light years, you, you don't know. So, Ms. Mosley, I know you told me not to say anything, not to do anything, but I, I wanted to do that publicly. I know that uh, Dr. Parkinson has some remarks as well, but we wanted to publicly do that. I, I, I toyed around with the idea of what to do at this particular meeting. I wanted to be consistent because I always scream consistency. And I didn't want to show that I had any favorites. I'm not saying Ms. Mosley's my favorite or anything like that. But she, she may be one of my favorites. <laughs> well, my grandmother would say my favorite is whoever is around me at that time and needs my love the most. Okay. So I'll say it that way. But um, again, publicly, Ms. Mosley, we do want to commend you on your hard work that you've done here in the Chester Upland School District. The Department of Education raves about Ms. Mosley. Our vendors rave about Ms. Mosley. Our principals rave about Ms. Mosley. And just the things that she's done in such short time. And it shows that things can be done here in Chester Upland. Yes. And I'm happy and I want to publicly say that I'm comfortable and confident to know that she's left this place intact with money in the bank. Don't mess up her reputation. We're not going to do that. Because as she leaves on June 30, there's money in the bank. The accounts are accumulating interest. Reports are current. Everything's compliant. And we should be able to pick up exactly where you left off. She made it that way. Uh, you know, some people, when they leave, and I've been around for a while, they run all their vacation time and sick time. You don't see them. This mostly is staying here until her very, very last day. I know that the district is closed on June 30th, Friday, the administrative offices. But she'll be here with me doing what we need to do to transition. Right, Ms. Mosley? See, she shook her head. She, she promised me that an hour ago. Because she made me go do something <laughs> that I won't discuss publicly. <laughs> but again, it was the what? <laughs> I wanted to pick up $2 million from Ms. Mosley. And we got, we got it done. But that's just the thing. She makes sure that things get done so that our students, because that's important, it, it ties back to our students have the resources that they need to thrive, just like any other student in any other district. So Ms. Mosley, for that, I commend you, I thank you publicly. And I know Dr. Parker, I think you wanted to say a few words as well. Absolutely, you know, receiver Nichols ain't up on all the things, but you know. I put the pressure on you, let's no, see what you can do. Let's make it happen. <laughs> I, I've actually had the opportunity to speak to Ms. Mosley. So I, I, in pretty much every meeting we've had, We've shared the great things that you've done for this district, Ms. Mosley. You know, um, I, I truly appreciate you. I know we've had some conversations about the next steps that you're about to take and your preparedness and are you ready. And I know what, what we shared is that you're going you're to go and make some great things happen. And you'll go and you'll see that you're more than ready. The knowledge that you brought to this district, and um, I think anyone knows that being a business manager is a tough job right now. Definitely, de definitely difficult to feel right now in many school districts. And being a Business manager in a financially distressed school district is a completely different level. And we talk, we've always spoken about, you know, a healthy district and things that you'll find. You were able to make magic and miracles happen in this district. Obviously, we know that we live from check to check at times in this district. 
some of our Tuesday meetings were spent talking about, you know, which bills are we paying today or this week, this week. And, you know, you were always good at, you know, like making sure we had a cash flow and, and making sure that everybody was taking care of the children, most importantly, and followed by the children, the staff. You were like, well, make sure we get the staff paid. So just the things that you were able to do, we truly appreciate your work. Um, you know, last night, part of the state of the district, much of that, that highlighted was the deficit that we walked into, but what you've been able to do in reducing that deficit, you and your team working collaboratively to do that along with um, other departments. So, you know, Receiver Nichols said, said much of it all. You, you know, you'll be greatly missed. Um, we, we shouldn't say it publicly because we don't want that other school district, they may be watching, but we, we, we get you back, you know, after you go and get what you need, he said. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, you're going to do extremely well, and they're fortunate to have you there. And I wish you nothing but the best of luck. See, some people can bring gifts. Well, Ms. Mosley, Ms. Mosley, you can do that, Mom Mosley. But when, when the wine of Mosley says, don't you better not do anything, I, I listen to her. I can't. But we, she knows we have something We have something planned that uh, we'll have a good time and send her out in the Chester Pride way. Unfortunately, there was a limited budget because Ms. Mosley still oversees the money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move right into the approval of the minutes. At this time, I hereby approve the minutes from our public meeting held on May 30th, 2023. The meeting minutes for uh, May 30th, 2023 are hereby approved. Ms. Uh, Madam Secretary, is there a signing sheet for public comment on action items only? Anyone wishing to speak on action items only, please speak to the, step to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and you uh, have of course, there's dialogue back and forth for three minutes to do so. Thank you. Ms. Carla Beaver. Oh, that's public comment. I'm sorry. For agenda, I'm sorry. Ms. Deneen Mosley, polio number 49110170300. Good evening. I'm going to go through my questions so I don't exceed the three minutes. My questions are on B1. Um, I noticed that we're uh, stating principles, but there was a principal search done, uh, which was public knowledge, but I don't see any new principles. So I'm trying to see was the principal search not able to net um, a viable candidate. I also see Mr. Garcia um, listed again, but this time as a transportation and food service coordinator, which appears to be two different skill sets. I want to know if that assignment is going to be effective. I also have a question about B4, if that could be explained and what the financial ramifications will be to this current school year as well as next year's um, budget. Um, C9, if we could give a brief overview as to what was done from last month, which showed a deficit in the budget, to this month, um, what was done to make it a balanced budget, as well as D12. Um, the list of individuals that um, are receiving that, are these the only Chester Upland School District personnel receiving a raise or bonus in 2023-24? I see it's allocated to ESSER dollars, which are non-renewable dollars. So how would those increases be um, managed by the budget going forward? Those are my questions. Okay, Ms. Holden, I'm going to take the easy stuff that I know. And I can go with B4 and D12. And Mr. Jarman, you may need to jump in here. This is a, uh, a grievance settlement, I can say. Correct. 
for the professional services contract that we have in place and D4, D12 are related. It is a one-time 3% cost of living bonus that is going to be paid for with the ESSER dollars. So those individuals that you see on D12 are the only affected employees that will, that are part of this grievance settlement and it doesn't have any future impacts on the fiscal uh, health of the district. You're saying one time, but it's listed for two years. So it's more than one time. It says 2022, 2023, 2024. Well, the B4 is a correction to our December meeting. So this was something that was approved in December, but the language only said 2023, 2024. So it should have been current from year end next year. So it's just clarified the language. So it's not a one-time bonus. They're receiving the bonus twice. So the, uh, so B4 is a correction of just the language in the MOU. So one that's listed under B12 is the one-time bonus for those individuals that are impacted. So there's an additional one that is coming, the, um, the bonus, but it will have other individuals that are on it. And if I will just add, those salaries of 23, 24 are already included in the budget that Correct. is in the balance. Okay, I that still didn't clarify. So these that these persons listed have already received yeah. their three percent for 2022-23. So in December we had an MOU agreement to right. change the contract. There was a list of individuals on it, but these individuals were not. So then we had to go back and correct it. So they should have gotten it in December, but it was not on it. So that resulted in the grievance which is what B4 is, so it's just us settling the grievance, but they should have already received it when everyone else did. So that's why it kind of looks like it's going to be back to back. So there will be a second one that will come out, but it will have all of the individual money. So these people were inadvertently left off, essentially, in December. So we're just correcting that, but yes, there will be another one, but it will For have different- 23, 24. Yes. Yes. And that will be listed. It's only professional contract employees. So it's those individuals who are on the 13th step because they will not receive a raise because it's a, the highest step on the scale. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. And B1, B the question was about principal search and then Mr. Garcia. Yeah. Yeah, so the um, principal search and um, the question she asked did the principal search re um, yield any candidates? We did um, have some candidates we were looking to identify. Um, at the completion of the search, some of those candidates had taken other um, opportunities, and um, so we moved on. Um, I know there was a question about the cost of the principal search utilizing the Del Delaware County Intermediate Unit. I just wanted to make clear to the public that's done at no cost. We, we pay the Delaware County Intermediate Unit services. Um, the only cost was advertisement in the newspaper and things that, such as that, which we would have done anyway. So. Um, And Mr. Garcia. Yes, Mr. Garcia. Um, he was uh, listed as our transportation coordinator. We are actually extending that to um, food services as well to support that. His skill set definitely does cover both. Um, with the food services, it's not an every single day job. It's, you know, reporting. We're just a person who's helping us to get our subsidy back. Uh, Dr. Mumin has been doing this for the past year, which yielded over one point million dollars, several million dollars. Um, so. What was the exact number, Dr. Mooney? I don't have an exact but, number, but, but you still have but so seven, 1. 1. 2 1.2. So I had said 1.1, 1. 1.2 at this point, but there's still claims still out there. And, you know, just want to speak to the importance of both of those jobs. Um, it's, it helps with our subsidies, and we do get money back. But Mr. Garcia is more than Garnett. Garcia Garnett is more than capable of doing both okay. positions. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right. We have Miss, is it Sylvia? No comment. Okay. And Ms. Arnold. I have no comment. Okay, thank you. So at this time, we'll move on to take action on action items. Action items A1 through A16 are hereby approved. Action items B1 through B4 are hereby approved. Action items C1 through C14 are hereby approved. Action items D1 through D12 are hereby approved. 
and action items E1 through E80 are hereby approved. At this time, we'll move to public comment, general public comment. Ms. Carla Beaver, please step to the podium with a microphone, state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Carla Beaver, 914 Buffalo Street. My first comment is the senior prom. We paid $100 for our kids to have a nice senior prom. The prom was not decorated. We had not have a, you know, a photographer. Plus, the kids had box food. Come on now. That was ridiculous for $100. So our parents don't have no pictures of remembrance of their kids at the prom. My second one is... I requested the PICO scholarship for my son. I was told that that scholarship was only for Chester High students, not STEM Academy students. We get to class day, they announced three students from Chester High, one student from STEM Academy. So I need answers on that. They said it stated in your contract that it's only for Chester High students only. I'm, I'm familiar with it, but I, we, we, we did, the district didn't award. I have, can we have a conversation with it, about that after? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we sure can. And that's it. All right. Thanks, Ms. Mm -hmm. Ms. Karen Meyer, 904 Pusey Street. Good evening. Good evening. Um, the state of the district, I feel it should have been more informative regarding academics. And I think the community deserves more insight regarding um, academics. Um, the updates um, that you mentioned, Dr. Parkinson, um, regarding renovations should have been more clear regarding Chester High School. You only mentioned windows, bathrooms, and um, I know that there were renovations being done, but I think we should have got more in information regarding that. Um, based upon um, Mr. Um, Bell's interview, I, I see that um, I know that you noticed that the middle school cheerleaders need uniforms. Um, they do not have uniforms, and they basically take our old uniforms. These sweaters that the Chester High School cheerleaders that are, are wearing for um, football season, they have been wearing since 1999. And um, I know that we're saying we do not have money, but I hope that we can find some money for the football season for the cheerleaders. Um, and this is, I should have mentioned this regarding the um, principal interviews. Um, I was asked to be a part of the interviews. I was emailing back and forth, but no one never contacted me regarding um, that you had already made decisions till we see it here. Um, I think that as a community and as a taxpayer that we should be involved in any time we're making decisions regarding our schools. That's it for me. Anybody want to say anything again? No. No response. Dr. Parkinson, you're going to respond more regarding the renovation for the high school? Yes, I'm fine. You'll do it another time. You're not going to do it right now. Yeah, this is a part of I just said. I'll send you information okay. with the, in the email, but it'll be updated. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Vine. Uh, Mr. Lee Mosley, I'll follow the number 491 Yes, I also wanted to get a, give a comment about the State of the District meeting last night. I really felt um, surprised to hear that next year would be the year uh, that we would have a year of accountability because I feel accountability should occur the moment you are appointed, hired, or elected into the, a seat or position. And so I also am asking the receiver and this elected board to be very discerning concerning the timelines and not so quick to lump things together in the same basket and say an administration inherited a particular reality. Leadership also means you examine the effectiveness or ineffectiveness since taking office or being hired and truly do the hard work of assessing decisions made and gains achieved, as well as momentum loss in addition to progress or any realities inherited. So I'm asking that we please do due diligence when it comes to accountability 
and not seek to silence voices that question decisions and actions that hinder or undermine progress. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. Uh, Ms. A. Jane Arnold, 2601 McCary Street. Thank you so very much. I would like to say that the Gates Scholarship Program opens July 15th. You can go to that website and see those dates. I would ask that the principals find uh, time for students who are qualified to sit and fill out that application. I will follow that up with an email to all of you with a little bit more detail. I want to say thank you, sir, for the three-day promise for answers for comments that we make here. And in that vein, I would like to give you, sir, uh, some comments that were made last time, and I'm going to ask again for a more comprehensive budget for uh, our CTE program. I will highlight here what I'm referencing, and I think with your skills in uh, budgeting and accounting, you can understand what I mean when I say we need a more comprehensive budget for that part there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to offer a plea one more time for more people to be hired to help our main for this people. I strongly believe that they need more help in the building, so I would want to put that on the table again. And uh, for your replies for three days, could you tell us how many students are enrolled in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade in each of our buildings currently? So we can see that total, and then tell us, uh, if you can, what you have already available as a floor plan for the first floor at 1350. I know you've hired contractors, so there must be a floor plan now. And I'm asking if you can, if you can include that in your three-day response so the public will have a chance to see what those plans are and how many students we're talking about accommodating in that space. The old organizational chart is still on the website. Uh, I gave to all of you some time ago the corrections that were needed on that organizational chart, they had not been made. We looked at it tonight. I also saw the new organizational chart based on some of the changes that you talked about. What I would like to ask us, sir, is that we keep the organizational charts current, and if we can consider putting accurate phone numbers on them for the persons in those positions, which would make it easier for folks who would see the charts to find those people and connect with them. The Juneteenth uh, we have a Juneteenth gift of flowers in front of Chester High on the side and maybe some other places. They look very lovely. And I'm asking if we could, and I know this is a stretch because we don't have people in maintenance. So I'm going to ask them to take on the job of maintaining those beautiful shrubs that we have been given over the uh, holiday so that we can honor that gift from some persons who thought enough of us to do that. And I think that is the end of my comments. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Uh, hearing nothing else, that concludes this meeting. This meeting is adjourned.